folks, how's it going? So, uh, listen, this, uh, this video is going to be about, you know, uh, I got a lot of calls from folks about uh, they want real estate wholesale, then we get in real estate wholesaling, and is it okay for them to go after on market properties on the MLS? Okay, so essentially, it, you know, as, as a real estate wholesaler, is it a good strategy to, you know, get properties on the MLS and assign them to your buyer? Okay, and there's a lot of information out there on the internet. A lot of people say, yes, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, you can do it. Oh, I've done it. Anik doing it. I'm making all this money doing that. Okay, and other people are like, no, don't do it. Okay, so. So, so, and you're going to say, well, why are you making your video? Well, I, I'm going to kind of give you both sides of the argument, okay? And you can make a, a very prudential decision based on what I'm going to tell you. This is from, I've done this many, many years, decades, okay? So th this is a reality you need you need to own, okay? P people like going on the MLS because it's easy, right? It's just, you get a real estate agent, a real estate agent just looks at properties, just put offers in, you know, and brew a pot of coffee and put offers in and, you know, throw a bunch out there and eventually well, hopefully one of them stick. And now you got a, now you got a sweet deal you give to your buyer and everything else. Okay. The reality is, is it's a lot more complex than that. Okay. So I want you to understand the, 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 the pitfalls of buying properties on MLS. Okay. Especially as a wholesaler. Okay. And these, these are real issues you have to deal with. Okay. So, but before I tell you the, the negative stuff, I will tell you the beauty, the nice thing about it. If 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 all the stars align, if it works out great, you have a buyer on board, you have a good agent, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's nice. I mean, somebody's done all the work for you, right? You, you see what I'm saying? Like somebody, real estate agents have done hustle out there. They've talked to sellers doing what you're not doing. You should be talking to sellers, but someone else has talked to a the seller. They convinced them to put list their property in the MLS, and so it's. Is data that's there, these guys are motivated potentially, uh, and so all you gotta do is put offers out. So it's 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 easy in a sense that someone's done all the work for you. Okay, does that make sense? Now, the, the challenge is what I'm gonna tell you. Okay, there's two challenges that I really want to address for you. Uh, you know, getting properties under contract and making money wholesaling properties on the MLS. Okay, number one is it has to do with well, the, the first one is it has to, has to do with the real estate agent. How you're going to have to, there's some things you have to know about working with a real estate agent, trying to do wholesaling. And two, the the challenges you're going to have with your, your buyer, okay? Your cash buyer. Does that make sense? Okay, so first I want to talk about the real estate agent. The more real estate agents, they're typically, not, not all of them, but m m most of them, they think retail a lot. And so you go in and they're trying to get a huge discount. They're they're not going to be comfortable with that. They just aren't. Most are not. They don't think like that. And for you to get any kind of discount, for you to be able to make this work, obviously the numbers have to be working for your buyer. And so if you're asking a real estate agent who's not comfortable with putting low ball offers in, you know, 20, 30 offers a, a, a week, you know, you're going to have a real challenge there. Okay. You got to own that. Okay. Unless you find an, an agent, like, ah, I don't care. It's no problem. The, those agents exist. They're just, they're rare. Okay. The second thing you have to deal with is your agents is going to want, you know, a, earnest money. You're going to have to do that. Okay. And if you don't have the earnest money, you're going to have to overcome that one. Now, what I would tell you though, if you do use an agent, you can just have, have the earnest money be released after the inspection contingency. So you put some earnest money down and it's not, it's not live, it's not hard until after your 21 business day inspection contingency. Okay. But you got to own that. And if you don't have the earnest money, you, you need to have it. You can't be putting offers in without earnest money. It's not how it works when you have a real estate agent. Okay. So you, you got you to know that. All right. And you're going to have to play by the agent's rules or agents, you know, the, the, they just don't think like you do. So that's the first issue you need, you need to understand. When you, ever you're putting an offer in with an agent, you're going to have to play by the agent's rules. I mean, because they have parameters that, they're, that they, they're supposed to abide by that the broker set for them, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But the real issue I want you to think about is this from a buyer's perspective, how you make money as a real estate agent, or I'm sorry, real estate wholesalers, you bring value to both sellers and your buyers and your buyers. They have a business model, which is buy distressed properties, sweat equity into them, spend a bunch of money most of the time, oftentimes, and they sell for a profit. It's risky, but it's a big profit. Okay, so here's the reality, though. You need to understand. Your buyer, okay, cash buyers aren't idiots. Okay, they've got access to the MLS. They've got 
themselves. If not, they've got every half a dozen real estate agents sending them the same property that's listed on them. Hey, I got a new deal for you. Well, everybody knows every flipper, you know, they know about this deal. It's it's out there, right? So that's the first issue. You, you got to bring value to them. If you're showing them what they already know about, then that's that's ridiculous, okay? I can't tell you how many times I've had a new wholesaler, hey, I got a deal for you. And I get on MLS and it's pending, right? For 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 less than what they're trying to assign it to me for. I'm like, what would you, what you, well, that's a deal. See, in the, it's like, that's, you're not, that's not a way to, 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 to build relationships with cash buyers. It's actually the way to really piss them off. Okay. So you got to realize they know about these, these properties. Now, if it's listed on MLS for two hundred thousand dollars, and you somehow get on the contract for a hundred, and you can assign it for one ten, your buyer, yeah, that that you know, they might be. Well, that shoot, okay, that, I can't believe you did that. Great, yeah, let's do some business. That makes sense, okay. But that's rare, so just know your buyers have access to this stuff, okay. But the second issue you need to understand that the challenge you have with your buyers is this: your, it's all about resellability, okay. So. Whenever you buy, most buyer builders, buyer builders or flippers, whatever, they like off market properties because it's not public what they bought the the property for. Okay, so when they they go to resell it, the some end user buyers are going to go out to Wells Fargo or XYZ Credit Union. They're going to get a loan for the house and they're going to have a home inspection and they're going to then have the banks going to send out an appraiser, and the appraiser is going to. The first thing they do is they look at the MLS. They see what it used to sell for. And if they see that the buyer, right, bought it for $100,000, $200,000, and now they're selling it for, you know, three ninety, dollars they potentially have a red flag. I mean, it depends on what the loan is. But with the lender, they, they may go, hey, you're, you're making too much money on this. It's you know, almost 100% proper. They may make you get two appraisals kind of thing, right? Because it's it, the profit's so high, they don't care the fact that the the flipper put seventy five thousand dollars of his own cash to fix the, the the flooding in the basement, mold in the attic, add a new roof, you know, whatever. Permitted the the the, the second bathroom, whatever. You know, one is seventy five thousand bucks. They don't care about that stuff. So it, it's harder for the seller to sell it, and it's just more drama. So they they're always looking for. We're always looking for off-market property so we don't have these issues does that make sense okay so i hope this helps you this the, these these are real issues you have to address if you want to tr try on market properties i know it's easy it's simple you just get a real estate agent start putting offers in but you're gonna have to deal with putting up with the agent okay you know about the earnest money and also really bring value to your buyers you know and i would i would tell you really exhort you to if you want to start bringing on market properties to your buyer, ask them first, hey, are you comfortable with me doing this, right? This is kind of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to make sure to bring value to them. And if you do that, you have an open communication, I think it'll really help you be able to get these deals closed. So uh, worst case, they don't want to do it. And and if that's the case, go do, talk to sellers yourself. You can do this. Don't don't be lazy. I know it's uncomfortable, but start talking to sellers yourself, solve their problems. You can make a lot of money. Hope this helps. Kind of a long video, but if you need help with some of this stuff, you need some clarification, and you want to talk about some joint venture, just let me know below, and we'll get on a Zoom call, and maybe do some business together. Uh, Godspeed, and talk to you soon.